for today's video i have some guests one of them is kinsley okore you can find him that is his youtube handle and another one is noella you can find her noella in life that is her youtube handle guys they are super duper amazing you are going to be meeting them on this video stay tuned and enjoy hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl great faith i'm here again guys i'm in kaunas no need to know if you like this one i'm not <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Baby. I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking about right now. This one was not my own words. Okay, guys, we are going to introduce. Oh, <laughs> we are going to introduce ourselves from here. Okay, after which you guys already know me. Let me not go deeper. So let's start from you. Can you please introduce yourself? I don't get it. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Hi, my name is David. <laughs> oh, they cannot hear you now. <clears throat> okay, so my name is David. Nice. I live and uh, I live in Kaunas, basically. Uh -huh. I've been here for a couple of years, and I like it here. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> hey guys, uh, my name is Noella. I am Kenyan, and I have been living in uh, Lithuania, both Vilnius and Kaunas, for some few years now. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry about my voice. I was shouting yesterday, but it's another story. Both videos are going to be feel as that. What is it? You know, be serious. Are you serious? Are serious? So, guys, yeah, so you know me. Um, no long introductions. Uh, I remain your own boy, Kingsley. As usual, uh, it's good to you know be back on this channel. As usual, fit. I will take the time for your introductions. <laughs> All right, guys, just to cut it short, my name is Kingsley, and um, it's good to be back on Fit's channel one more time. So, how many videos you know. did your how many views did your the previous video have? Don't even go there. It's a lot of. <laughs> yeah, I can't even remember. Go there. But it's thousand, did, two thousand, three. Yeah, I, I, I will check. But video we cast. Yeah, it does. It's on its own world. The video is, wow. is rolling yeah. on its own world. It's just roaming and roaming. The, ro the video is roaming. <coughs> All right, so guys, today we just want to talk about like a general topic. It's just a simple stuff we want to talk about. A lot of you want to migrate, right? This is what we deal with on this channel. Looking at us here, we are from all like different backgrounds, different experiences. We are not wasting your time. Highest max as usual, 25 minutes. We are done with the video. We are not talking much. So <laughs> we just want to like for 10 minutes. Old. Yeah, we, <laughs> we just okay, okay, okay. We just want to like tell you guys like a uh, few things about how we traveled we are not going in details if you want any of them to come back hey uh, if you want any of them to come back here let me know in the comment section i'm going to drag them i will tie rope carry them come back here they will come back and if you guys really want to hear their stories in details how they did and everything they did. so we want to talk about how they left so we are going to start with you again david wow. yes we are coming like this so like, why did you decide to leave your country? And why did you decide to come to Lithuania? Just like, why? Uh, basically, I wanted to have an international experience. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like um, I needed to go somewhere with opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, which means uh, somewhere I can go and I can uh, freely roam around. Oh, so yeah. the best place I could think about was somewhere in Europe. <coughs> Because um, basically, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was the opportunity to like um, travel to over 20 countries without having to um, get visa and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So I was doing that. Uh, I was thinking about that. And I mean, I had other options in mind, but like uh, back then, the easiest place to get into was um, Lithuania. And of course, I've never heard of Lithuania until my friend told me about Lithuania. And it was like, oh, there's a country called Lithuania, it's in Europe. I mean, the first time I heard it, I was like, that's part of Russia, I don't want to go there. <laughs> and he said, no, it's in Europe. So I was like, okay, uh, let's give it a shot. Oh, yeah. And that was how it all started. And, I mean, I was living in South Africa before I came, before I decided of that. And from there, I flew here. Mm -hmm. And it's been nice so far. Oh, nice. Like, yeah, why didn't, why didn't you leave Kenya to come to Lithuania? Why didn't you go to, let's say, like Germany? Mm. No, for me, I, I always say I came to Lithuania through elimination. So I had, I, I knew there's more to life. I just knew, like, 
you know how in, sometimes we can stay in environment so much that we become limited by it. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I want to see more. Then I had some money in the bank account. Mm -hmm. And I was like, where can this money take me? My criteria was simple. I want this money to afford me one year school fees, some pocket money. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and of course, I wanted a place where I can easily move. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't want restrictions. No, 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 no. So I went online and I searched. I end up. I ended up with two schools: well, Jagalorian University in Krakow ah, and VDU. Yeah. Jagalorian. Yeah, I, I can't say it now. Well. I'm Mali. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not Polish. Jagalorian. Oh, Jagalorian. that was in Poland. Yeah. I was thinking like in Krakow. In Krakow. In Krakow. Uh, Jesus Christ! It's the no no map God. <laughs> but that uni. They only had autumn intake and I was looking for spring. Uh, and the only one that had spring was video. Okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. So then a year before, my sister had come for Erasmus in MRU mm -hmm. and she had a good time. So I was like, okay, well, Lithuania, they have spring. And again, my sister was here and she enjoyed it. And she said, people are nice. It's beautiful. I'm like, let's go to Lithuania. Oh, wow. And honestly, I'm so grateful. You know, things happen mm -hmm. and, we, and we don't know. But ultimately, when, after a while, you are like, God was guiding me. You think you are doing the decision, but actually yeah. not. You are making decisions, mm -hmm. but ultimately you are being led. Mm -hmm. And also, like what the Bible says, like good, like things happen for, for good of those who love the Lord. I think if somebody is godly, mm -hmm. you can just like relax. Some, sometimes things you you don't know when it's happening now, but you will only join the dots backward. So for me, I'm I'm really grateful I ended up here. To be honest. Oh, nice. Yeah. So why <coughs> did you come here? Yes. Why? <laughs> The thing is, you know, this question why um, has been asked a lot by most Lithuanians and I think uh, this video is a very nice opportunity to answer that big question. Oh, why? Nebo. I don't get no. Michael. No, but you call your neighbor, come and say to me. Why is this is not audible? Yeah. Sorry guys, my voice is recuperating now as well. I did try to recover. So, um, the big question why I would say is... Um, Number one will be discovery because mm -hmm. you know 80% of those that migrated to Lithuania <coughs> had it for the first time. And I'll say I'm also one of those that actually had the, you know had it for the first time and it's actually you know uh, got me thinking that you know I was I'm a very curious person actually so I decided to make a little bit of research about it, know the geographical location and also at that point I was like in the midst of making the decision I wanted to come to Europe you know fine but where to exactly so I decided that okay uh, since I want to know more about this place I want to you know really know this place that is Lithuania and it is not that popular so I decided to okay I think it's worth it so I you know took the first step and here we are today so honestly guys it's it's really nice and it's it's a, it's it's one of the decisions that I'm actually grateful that I actually took so mm -hmm. so why I came to Lithuania myself I was looking for a course that is very cheap and I saw it in Lithuania and that was how I took my ass and I came here <laughs> I purely financial <laughs> yeah like <clears throat> something that was cheap to start with i don't want to like stress much okay, yeah us. pocket funds and everything so guys we are going to address more two questions and that will be the end of the video mm -hmm. so david can you please tell us what are the challenges you would say you faced as an international student leaving your home country leaving everything behind and just pursuing your career what are those challenges that you have faced because coming abroad, people think you plug money on trees. So what are those challenges? Anyone seen this video? Uh, I feel like um, when I newly arrived, the biggest challenge was getting a job. Uh, because uh, basically you needed to have a bit of Lithuanian knowledge before you can actually get a job, regardless of what kind of job you would get. I mean, unless you were going to do the shittiest of the shittiest job then you can basically get that without like um, language skills i mean now it's not like uh, my language skills is like perfect i do speak to some accent but um now i feel like i know more about lithuania than i used to know mm -hmm. so like uh, basically the, the, um, the biggest challenges would be your finances i mean that for me that was my biggest challenge because integrating was quite easy 
because uh, prior to my arrival in Lithuania, I was already making friends online. Mm -hmm. So when oh. I arrived, it was like uh, a bit easy. I mean, one of the people I met on some social platforms was a lecturer at my university. Whoa. So when I got here, she nice. saw me and she was like, oh, I'm teaching this and that. And I was like, okay, I mean, that can help me. And I mean, she was like uh, really helping me if I, needed some if I needed some answers to some questions or some things like that. She had my back and she was putting me through, so it kind of made it easy. And of course, I feel like um, um, sometimes, like, yeah, basically, when you would go into the store and you wouldn't be able to find anyone who speaks in English and you need to get something that you can actually find, that's actually a very big challenge as well, too, because uh, you, don't, you wouldn't know how to explain yourself unless you have, you, uh, have uh, a Google like Translator yeah, and like all of that, right? I'm and, like and I mean, those, those things, those things were just like uh, a very big challenge, which is more like the language barrier was the biggest challenge, I guess. Because, like, of course, um, coming from an English-speaking country to somewhere that they don't speak English, mm -hmm. it's fucking crazy. So I know, right? you have to deal with that and... I mean, the best way to go about it is to integrate yourself into the land where you are. So what, what, what kind of helped me was I started learning the language. I was forced to learn it. Then, I mean, being forced is never enough. So I had to like um, make myself get interested in it. And ever since I started learning it, things started getting a bit easier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's never rosy though, because like sometimes it gets smooth, then it gets rough, then it gets smooth, then it gets rough. So you just have to prepare for that if you're mm -hmm. coming to Europe, especially uh, Lithuania. Hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your challenge, girl. What, yeah, what was the challenge like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, the biggest challenge, honestly, was COVID because we came, mm. we came, and then two weeks we went on a lockdown. Mm -hmm. You're in a new country. I didn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, I was living in the dorm. Thankfully, that's safe because if I was not living in the dorm, it would have been oh my. I don't, I don't even want to imagine. But at least there were some people around me. Uh, you're new, you don't know anybody, you know nothing, literally, and then everything is shut down. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that, that, that thing, I was so sorry. I remember, honestly, like, hey God, I consume too much alcohol in this period. I was so lonely. <clears throat> and then uh, there is nothing to do. I wasn't even sure that like, you can go out on walks mm -hmm. because, you know, you don't know how safe the place mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. Hey, but I think, you know, our hardships also teach us a lot so but oh my i really struggled i struggled i, I don't wish that on anybody to be honest i don't yeah. wish that on anybody. Uh, so there was the socialization aspect mm, but other than that yeah pretty much it's, it is what it is mm -hmm. what was your challenge like when you came what's that thing that it was like challenging for you i think the major thing speak up will be language actually mm -hmm. um language is it's it's a necessity wherever you find yourself i mean it's the you know <coughs> the way you communicate and um, you know interact with them so language was a little bit of a challenge for me when i came mm -hmm. then i had to there was a time i i was so fed up with some situations because at some point you just need to you know learn the basic basic you mm -hmm. know uh, then i was like forced to start learning because i couldn't you know um endure the situation anymore because i mean you can't be somewhere without even knowing the basics even if you do not know you know the major aspects so i think language is a you know a little bit of a challenge for me mm -hmm. aside that it has really been good uh, mm. for, me, for me you know uh i don't really see things as you know a challenge of what would be would be but i would say the language was like you know the part i really struggled with so hmm. but so far so good i mean now it's uh great you know so <laughs> Oh, yeah, you man. have to add. He, he don't carry us with him. I know, <laughs> right? I know it is. Show yourself. I'm tired for this guy. Alright, for <laughs> me. Yeah. Go report him. He's going to report him. He wants to show his head now. Visco is correct. Normal level. No. For <laughs> me, the challenge that I have was, um, apart from the language, which they've already rightly stated out, was um, uh, the people was like a, a bit too cold for me. Because coming from Nigeria, everywhere is bustling, bubbling, bubbling, like 
I found it very difficult because I came in 2019, man. Yeah, that's for sure. It was the peak of. And they are very conservative, though. They are very conservative and reserved. How yeah. do I survive? I've been Niger. Like, do you understand? I'm no, Nigerian. No ginger. No ginger. No noise. You can literally Nobody hear the Chris. sand or the pain. <clears throat> Nobody's yelling. Like, yeah, everybody's so normal. <laughs> like, I'm they're like, not even normal, but they look like they are normal. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? Like, I went not because everywhere was so calm, and um, you could literally pick a pin when it falls because no noise. And I was like, is this a way of life? Is there the people like the thing that just literally grows on you? Because with time, you're like, you start adjusting without mm. you knowing. No, I can't even stay in a noisy place. Uh -huh, me too. I don't want too many people. Like I don't want too many stuff. Like to me, it's noisy. Like when people say I'm going to jam, I'm like jam is noisy. Like you know, it's crowded. Like you know. So yeah, when I came, it was difficult for me. But with time, uh, I just that grew on me, and I everything became fine. But apart from that, I think that is just it because there are not even no much much people. The crowd is not much, so. Those were the little, little like challenges. And apart from that, the challenge of me greeting people when I'm walking on the road, I was doing that. Everybody, yeah. good afternoon, good morning. I was greeting people and later I found that I was being stupid. <laughs> I was being stupid because like, nobody else sat. How do you pass your elders without, without greeting them? Exactly. <laughs> Those challenges, nobody else sat. I was like, it should be like more of cultural shock. Yes, like. I think it's more yeah. of cultural yeah. What are your cultural they're just, differences? They're just nasty. Yeah, I was like, what is this? So guys, those are the challenges we had. We're not going deep, like I said, it's a very short video. So the last question we're going to be taking from everyone is, um, a lot of people want to come from Africa. A lot of people want to come. Apart from Lithuania, they want to go to like other countries. Mm. So leaving your home, staying in a foreign land for more than one year, you have already seen a lot of stuff. Mm. There have been times that things were like, you wish like you never stepped out of your house. Sometimes you're like, oh yeah, glad I did. I, I took this step. So what is that advice you want to give to anyone seeing this video? What is that advice? Like, if you can like state that like three things you want to tell them. What, for instance, <coughs> let me narrow it down. What should they prepare for living abroad? What are the things that they should look out for? <coughs> and what are the things that they shouldn't really do from your experience when they are abroad? <coughs> Sorry, girl. So I'll stand for you, David. What are the advice you need to give to anyone seeing this video? Um, I think the first thing first is you need to get ready for the weather. Okay. So whenever you're coming, you have to check the weather, like um, check what season it is, basically, because you have to prepare for that. Because when I came in from South Africa, I wasn't prepared. I came here with just my basically track suit. And I got here, everywhere was filled up with snow. And even the white people were telling me, like, do you want to commit suicide or what? Because, like, how would you come out? Come out like, I came out of the airport, right? But they don't know if I've been here for a long time or not because they didn't see me with my luggage, right? So they were like, do you want to commit suicide or what? Like, it's fucking cold. I got here when it was, like, minus 25, which is one of the coldest times in Lithuania. So you can imagine how that shit is. So. But coming here, I was kind of naive and unprepared so i didn't even check the weather forecast to or i mean i knew it was winter but i wasn't even actually thinking about how it was gonna be like so that was like really terrible i mean i shaked until i got to my place of residence and that was wild and i think the second thing is you need to know that it's never gonna be rosy because like everyone has this ideology of oh i'm going abroad like within two three four months mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back with funds, like my, my family can baby. start depending on me or some shit like that. It never happens <coughs> that way, cause it's gonna Wake look up on nice your and then it's gonna get really tough and you're gonna hate yourself. Like I, I, when I was coming, I was telling my mama like, oh, you don't need to send me money and shit. You know, when I when I get here after six months, it's all settled. After one year, I was still thinking about my life, like, what, 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 is, what is going on here? And you know, the father, I told my mom, like, don't send me money and dad. Like, I was like, I, I don't know I was going to go back and be like, I, I need to get all that statement. So I was like, yeah, I, I, I have to survive. So I had to do something one way or the other. I mean, regardless of what I had to do, I still had to, like, put my pride aside and just, like, be like, mom. Shit has gone work, shit has gone south. Just just a Send little the money. just a little for me to pick up myself. No. So that was just it, you know, and then what else could it be? Like 
I think you have to prepare for integration. You know, uh -huh. you need to you need to come for you need to have this mindset of if I'm going somewhere like when you're in Rome, basically you live like the Romans. Yeah. So you can't come to Lithuania and start thinking you can keep exhibiting the same attitudes you were uh -huh. exhibiting in Nigeria, like being lousy, constituting nuisance, trying to go against the law. I mean, here yeah, most of the time you don't even need you don't even be the police. That's the worst part of it. If you're driving. Or crossing the road i mean i got a fine for crossing the road <laughs> because the light was that i mean it was a green light then i was crossing when there was a hammer light you know like on the, for the pedestrian crossing the, of course and the police saw me i mean they waited for me though they approached me in a very nice manner just to give me a fine <laughs> so that was like really nasty so i mean in nigeria we don't actually care but like here you have to go by the law you have to do everything by the law so you have to be prepared to live by the law and then everything can be like really nice for you. I mean, if you're living by the law, you have no issues mm. because you don't have to be scared of the police or whatever. You can do anything. I mean, the good thing about Lithuania is, I mean, I've been here for a couple of years now and I can say that it's extremely safe. I mean, no one is going to attack you out of the blue. I mean, if you mind your business, of course, and if you don't go out alone at night. So going out alone at night is something that's very scary, oh, yeah? especially if you're going to be going out with a white girl, then you can always expect some bullshit. Oh, for the guys, right? Yeah, for the uh, guys, basically. So, I don't know about the girls, but for the guys, the if you're going out with a white girl at night, I mean, you, some not all the time, but sometimes, because this boy's like, I mean, I don't consider that racism. I feel like it's jealousy, because when you're walking alone, they don't actually give a fuck about you. Mm. But when they see you with a white girl, then yeah, that's when... Day, how do you have a girlfriend and I don't have... And if she's I don't cute, have a black then girl. there's going to be problems for sure. Oh, wow. But you guys that's just for the fun the part. Country. But I mean, besides that, I mean, Lithuania is really cold, it's really nice. Uh, you just have to get prepared. And if you can learn a bit of the language before coming, it's also an advantage. Because when you get here, the best part of Lithuanians is you don't need to speak a lot. You just tell them Laba Diena, Laba Slitas, or like Cape Town Sarkasi. I mean, those are the basics, right? Mm -hmm. But when they hear that, they just get soft towards you and they just feel interested in you and they want to help you out because they see the effort in you, you know. I mean, you don't have to pronounce it right, but just know how it's being said, you know, and it can be very easy for you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so let me, much. Let baby. me just pick it up. Where yes, it absolutely, girl. Yeah, I would say, I would add that do not be in people's country and then you have no interest in people's language and maybe even culture. Culture is not a must, but language, surely. You need to learn People, you're in their country. You need to learn the language. It doesn't have to be like you have to be uh, fluent, but right. learn so that you can be able to socialize. If anything is to happen and the only people you have access to is old people, then you need to be able to communicate. So I think that's also one thing I did not do <coughs> earlier. Uh, the first thing I, I wish now, like when I was just new, I should have taken Lithuanian classes. I'm yeah, trying to get them now. You did that? Yeah, yeah, I did. I started yeah. speaking Lithuania after three months. Oh my God! Oh. You see, that's now. That's it's, yeah. Uh, you're, you're, that's what has been helping me. Mm. Oh no! You are because I just came like, with that mindset of uh, I needed to integrate myself. It will help me. Like you can't struggle for anything. Nothing. Exactly. Now I don't struggle for shit. Nothing. Yeah. There are people who have been here for five years. They cannot count up to ten. They cannot even speak to the courier guy who's bringing them the HL package to their home. They cannot say my house is number this. They cannot. And you're like, what have you been doing? Then they are not really enjoying Lithuania or even just any other country because they have not integrated. They just say this will keep to themselves. No. <clears throat> if you show interest in people, automatically they will show interest in you. Yeah, then another thing I would say is uh, we can never really be prepared. The thing is about moving. You, we will say prepare, but you can never be prepared. Be open minded, be flexible, be adaptable. Yeah. If yeah, you, exactly. yeah, be very, very flexible. Don't just come with your ways. You say like, oh, in Nigeria, we only do this. In in Kenya, we only do this. Ah, you will you suffer. Must. You will suffer. Come with your mind to be like, oh, this is how it does? Okay. Like here, there are half systems that systems work, but you need to plan. You cannot start rushing people to be like, oh my God, I'm going to give you 50 euro. Do this document for me now, 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 now. It's not possible because not as you are used to to this thing, yeah, you be like, not. oh my god, there's only you. You need to, you need two months to process something, but you're 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 rushing, and then you only have two weeks. You've been post procrastinating until there's only two weeks. You're like, no, I'm gonna give somebody. I don't care how much do you want. I know this is no work. So the systems are in place. 
do what you're supposed to do and the other part will just work automatically mm -hmm. this is this is the best part of uh, developed countries uh, <clears throat> yeah, and i would say i think uh, don't stay with just the people of your color like as Africans, you still don't just stay with Africans. As a Nigerian, even don't just stay with Nigerians. Look for Kenyans, look for Ethiopians, look for South Africans, look for Indians. At least uh, <coughs> learn something from yeah, them. Yeah, mingle. Yeah, mingle one, two, three, and then advance your way of thinking because we ha we are so limited as as we have limited beliefs. Mm -hmm. We are coming from such a close mind, close I don't know, close communities. But the more you start opening yourself up, even your mind is like, wow, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. So this, those are the things I I, I, I would say to people. Uh, and take risks when you are young. I know you say three, sorry, ma. <laughs> <laughs> when you are young, you need to make mistakes when you are a young person. Please, it's, just give yourself permission to make mistakes. At some point, you will be 45 with three children and mortgage and whatever. You can, you know, your brain is like, but when you are young, be like water. Learn quickly, fail quickly, rise up quickly. Yeah. This one, this agility will will take you so 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 far in life. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Ah, uh -huh. uh, okay. A lot, Hello, a lot has been said. <laughs> a lot has been said. So the only thing I will add is just maintain your mental health. Uh -huh. <laughs> this one, that, that, that's mental. very necessary. Yes. The, that is the only. Everything you need to know about survivor, they've told you what to do and what not. The only thing that we add is your mental health. Just keep it intact because a lot go hit you. <laughs> so just stay safe. Go hit a lot. You say go hit a lot. <laughs> so you see all this thing they are saying. It's you know it's part. So the only thing is that while you're facing all this, just maintain your mental health, and that's it from my own side because. You and a lot go eat each other, eh? Mm. You, you, you go pass through a lot, a lot go pass through you. No you understand? And that's just it. Just maintain your sanity. All right, All right, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, for me, I just have to add a few things. Uh, coming from the perspective of everything they've said, everything they, they've said, everything, I don't have much. I will just add two things. Before you pack your bags from your country to another man's country, prepare yourself financially. Prepare yourself financially. From the airport, you need to hire a taxi. Down to the accommodation, you mm. need to pay for it. You need to buy food. Give yourself like one <coughs> more, one year rent. If you're paying for tuition, if you have the opportunity, pay for one year. So within that one year, you should have understood the dynamics of the country mm. that you're getting into. Right. People, stop leaving your country without the money. I have to yeah, like I know I'm screaming, I'm hitting my leg. Stop doing this, people. Don't leave your country to a foreign man's land without money. Plan, plan, and plan. The white man does not understand that somebody died at your village, and that was why you came here without money. You provided a bank statement, right? That bank statement means you are where to do. You can take care of your expenses. So when you come here and you get stranded, we see videos and photos of our brothers on the street. It's like, no, if you don't have money, plan and get your ass together before you come to another foreign land. Because there is nobody here, no matter how good you are to the person that is going to take up your responsibilities. You are on your own. Once you get in here, no matter except your biological related to the person, Apart from that, oh, yeah. you are on your own. <coughs> a lot of people you see in Europe are doing two jobs, three jobs to survive a lot of things. Nobody have the time to come and be checking you. Or have you paid your rent? Or have you paid it? Sometimes you don't even get to see your neighbor to ask for food or for water and all of that. Because they expect you to already have the money because you provided a bank statement. That is the major thing I really want to say. And the last thing I want to encourage you people is that this last one, always make your research even now we are telling you about lithuania research about it personally know what is there for you mm. and make your decisions if you don't research agents can tell you anything yeah i mean for lithuania you basically don't even need an agent you yeah can basically do it yourself it's not that difficult exactly yeah, it's straightforward I agents can money, agents so. can tell you anything i hear a lot of things and the ridiculous amount that you guys pay and i'm like wow where am i not seeing you guys Please stop giving them 10 million for Schengen visas. I need those money. Bring it to me. Let me help you. I will even help your generation, you know? <laughs> like, is that, <laughs> is that serious? 10 million. Is yeah, for Schengen visa. Uh, you know? About, 
Night of you were there, Rafa Schengen, we said that I don't even know. So, the guys, prepare. Yeah. Prepare. Plan financially. Finances is very important. With finances, you are going to be. You are going to feel relaxed. You are going to feel comfortable. At least yeah, you will you understand. Can think to make plans. Yeah, you can make your plans. You can know what to do, where not to go, how to go about it, how to pay your rent, how not to sleep on the street because you are tired of seeing those videos. So, guys, I think in this video, that is all. I don't know if anybody have anything else to add. Open an online bank account in your country. Mm -hmm. so that you can be able to access it when you're wherever mm -hmm. especially when immigration sometimes in immigration you cannot have enough money mm -hmm. but your family can can raise for you mm -hmm. and drop into your account mm -hmm. and then you can show immigration here mm -hmm. okay. yeah. as of because sometimes really you cannot have this money here mm -hmm. <clears throat> but there they will accept it if you show them when you're on your bank account okay mm -hmm. so yeah i think that was that was something i learned quite late because yeah it's a struggle to get this money yeah i see does anybody have any other thing any tips before we go anything oh, to check stay motivated <laughs> don't give up it's not easy <laughs> okay. but don't give up it's, it's a big oh your brain sacrifice. oh your mental health and if you fail depression is real try again not depression is real but <laughs> not for you both as you mentioned now you go hit so if you hit you, so, you hit them back because like we said these people are very conservative so if you would come here and you're trying to socialize and you can't socialize you might start losing your mind like me, I know people who are taking sleeping medication. So and you have to prepare yourself yeah. mentally yeah. that mm, at least you have to prepare for that part where you have to be on your own for a while. Yeah. You, you know, when you need to just like mind your business because that's how they live their life over here. Mm. I mean, I have my neighbors. I don't even know who my neighbors are <laughs> in my own building, you know, because no one talks to anyone, like, unless you meet by the corridor and you can just be like, hi, hi, and that's about it. No one is gonna be like, oh, I'm coming to chill in your apartment, or you should come to mine. No one does that, except your friends, of course. So, because everyone is busy trying to find their daily bread. So you have to be prepared for that. I mean, if you're a very extroverted person, of course, you have to prepare to be an ambivert sometimes. Hmm. Yeah. Guys, you've heard it all. They've already shared their experiences. And we want to say thank you so much, David, for sharing these little tips in this video. That is a huge one for us. So you You're think welcome. it's little, it's huge because a lot of people are going to see this video and it's going to help them, even if it's not specifically for Lithuania, guys. Mm -hmm. You can use any of this advice anywhere you're going, any part of the yeah, world. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can use it. Especially and thank you. In Europe. Yeah, exactly. You can use it anywhere. Girl, we really do appreciate you. She do have a YouTube channel as well. I'm going to be, of course, tagging her. You can go ahead to subscribe. She does a lot, a lot of great content. It's going to still help you guys. And also, thank you so much, Kinsley, for coming. You guys already know him, right? He's an OG, right? He has a YouTube uh, channel as well. I'm going to add all of them. So you can reach out to them, watch their content, reach out to them if you have questions or but for me if you ask me a question i will charge you for consultation i mean i don't need to do free uh question and answer she's that. above that she's at 30,000 subscribers they why can, is she consulting for free they can do free ones these no. ones they are very good at that me i'll just chat with you in the comment if you want more you can <laughs> don't go don't go don't but, go to her and watch she tell you to charge to charge you now run to us for for <laughs> your film if pay <laughs> pay if you if I know you, you don't go, is it a content price? You got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, that was a story for another day. But like, but comment guys, and subscribe. Honestly, honestly information, information, these informations are rare. So if, so if you're meant to pay for information, pay for information because these informations are not also gotten for free. Bef okay? Before, only if you know before I got them here. Before I got them to sit down here. Uh, this is our money sitting there. Is really so, guys, thank you so much for coming and God bless you guys. Can we say bye? Bye. Bye. Subscribe. Don't be a witch. <laughs>